Hello everybody and welcome to Painting with Victoria. Today we're going to be working with something a little bit different. We're going to be working with alcohol ink and paint pens. And um, I want to encourage you to please work in a very well ventilated area or outside, which is what I will be doing today. Now before we get started, let's talk about some of the materials we're going to be using. So let's just go ahead and start with the paper. Now I generally like to use um, the right kind of paper for each project and this, in the, this alcohol ink definitely takes the right kind of paper. Um, this is called Yupo and it's translucent. As you can see my hand is behind it and um, it's, nice for, it's nice but I actually prefer something a little bit more solid and that's the Pixis right here. And um, the reason why I like this is because it's a little it's a little thicker too, so it um, it holds it a little bit better. But anyway, um, let me pull this out and pull one of these out. And um, as you can see, you can't see my hand behind it, so it's definitely a lot uh, more opaque. And it has a very smooth surface. It's also acid free. This is the alcohol blending solution. And the blending solution is very, very important. I like to use Jacquard or Ranger alcohol inks. Um, they both carry quite a few colors, so it really doesn't matter which one you pick. I actually have a combination of both. And today we'll be doing something like this, but not exactly like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the brown color. And I don't wanna give you the exact name of the color because I want you to feel free to use any color to do your pot. So um, I'm going with espresso color. Please do not squeeze the bottle. You don't want the ink to be pouring out. You just, if you tip it, it will just come out all on its own. And so don't squeeze whatever you do. Um, if, it's, if you're having trouble having it come out, you can slightly, slightly squeeze it, but don't do it really hard. I'm trying to create a shape that resembles a pot and don't worry as you can see mine's not perfect and you you'll see why it doesn't really matter so i'm going to take some of the alcohol blending solution by uh, ranger and i'm just gonna drop some droplets on it and look what's happening it's really neat it's just kind of gonna it's gonna give my pot some texture which i'm really excited about wow look at this this is amazing so um, we'll let it do its thing. It's also changing the shape of my pot, but I really don't care about that either. So the same thing with the flowers. I want you to feel free to use any color you want. I'm showing you what color I'm using, but I don't want you to feel you have to do it the colors that I'm doing. I almost prefer you do your own original. So as you can see, I am just dropping some droplets of the magenta down just randomly, of course, above the pot because the pot's going to be holding the flowers. And um, this is kind of a orangey yellow color. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. Just drop some little droplets down. Let it bleed into the magenta too, that's always fun. Put as much or as little as you like. It really doesn't matter when you see the end result. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of this green to do some leaves. Just put some tiny droplets. Don't go overboard, whatever you do, don't put so much that you've just got a big blob of uh, colors. Um, we definitely want these to look like leaves, so that's why I always put them off to the side and um, going down the front. And this is doing exactly what I wanted to do. So now I've got this really pretty turquoise blue color and I'm going to go ahead and um, let it go across as if it's supposed to be like a tablecloth. And I'm going, I'm doing it in streaks of going across just to give it that, more of that look. And um, as you can see, it's bleeding, which I love. Doing its thing. It 
it usually doesn't bleed into the tape sometimes it does but if it does I have a way to fix that so don't worry about that so um, I'm gonna come back with some magenta and hit some little dots in some of the yellow areas this is the fun part I always love this part and let's see um, a lot of times you can just take the alcohol blending solution this is not a color now this is just al al alcohol and if you hit it in some of the colors that you've already done look what it's doing it makes it super fun and bright it's almost making it a neon color and I accidentally discovered this by dropping some on some of my uh, pieces and that's how I figured out it does that so good mistake I'm gonna take the yellow now and I'm gonna put some in the green and that kind of just gives the green some different um, shades and tones doesn't radically change it but you can see how it's forming cute little you know uh, circle shapes inside of my green alrighty so we're ready to do some last final ink blotches and basically that's what I call it or just ink blotches and there's um, a few more things I'd like to do this is gold and it is actually gold metallic alcohol ink so uh, you got to shake it up really 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 good before you put it on and I always like to add a little bit of silver or gold metallic ink to every single one of my pieces so I'm going to go ahead and just swipe it across the blue uh, what's supposed to be the tablecloth and I know you can't really see it very well right now but when it dries it's going to be ex really really shimmery and pretty and um, it's just just enough to g give it more of a tablecloth look so um, I'm going to go ahead and take the alcohol blending solution and hit it in my pot a little bit just to give it a little bit more um, interest. Look how cool this looks. And you really don't have a whole lot of control over it either. It just sort of does its own thing, which is one of the things I like about this kind of art. It's like almost like when I used to do pore painting, you can't blame yourself if it doesn't look good and you can't um, you can't take credit if it looks great. So um, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and back to the alcohol um, blending solution. And I'm just hitting it again in some of the places just to kind of uh, brighten up some of the little uh, flowers. But I am definitely feeling like we're close to the end um, of where we're ready to do the uh, paint pens. This is blue and I, um, I'm just putting it in a few places. I thought it might look a little bit more purple if it hits this um, magenta pink, which it is. I like that. So I think this is... Um, I think this is a good place to stop. Um, I feel like if I do anything more, I might um, not be happy. Um, again, just a little alcohol ink in a few places just to brighten up that. It was a little bit on the dark side, but um, I'm really happy with the way it is. So um, we're gonna let this dry for at least two to three hours. I, it needs to be really dry. A lot of times I'll just take it outside and um, if it's a sunny day and just put it in the sun, not if it's like 100 degrees outside. So uh, anyway, this is the best place to stop. And then we're gonna do the paint pens. So we're all done and now we'll, we are ready to be doodling with paint pens, but first, Let's go on to the next one, which is the roses. This is just a sample here. And um, this is pretty much the same as what we did before, but I think it's actually a lot simpler. I'm taking magenta and I'm just doing these little swirly motions uh, just to kind of establish where my roses are gonna go. 
So you can see it look like a little five-year-old right now just kind of scribbling. Again, I am not squeezing the um, bottle because if I do, I'm just going to get this big puddle of ink and that's not good. So I'm just letting the ink come out on its own and I just did some fun little swirly motions. And I'm going to take another color, another color red. The last one I did was more magenta. This one's actually called chili pepper. And um, I do like these two colors together. But um, again, I don't want you to feel you have to copy my colors. Um, whatever alcohol ink company you use, they will have a magenta and they will have a bright red, but it's probably going to have a different name. So in order to not confuse you, just use your imagination and um, and put as many roses as you like. I am just going to go with um, the four and the small one here. I want to leave some room for my leaves, so if I do anything more, it's just going to be mostly red, which you can do if you want. If you want to do all roses, which I've done before, um, by all means do. I've got the Blending Solution here by Ranger. And um, I like this bottle because it's little and it's just easier to sketch with it. Um, so just like we did in the last one, what it's doing is lightening, it's li lightening, <laughs> it's lighten, it lightens <laughs> some of the areas that I want lightened up. And um, look how pretty this looks. Oh, I love this. And so I'll do the same thing on all the rest of the roses and I'm just barely letting it come out of the bottle. Again, don't squeeze it. You can see this is a little on the messy side, but this is what you want. So this is the perfect class for somebody who feels that they're not artistic. This is perfect for you. So um, I, I definitely want to put some more colors in this um, and give it some more dimension. So I'm coming back with the magenta and just hitting it in a few places and then I want to get some dark something dark for the center so I actually have some alcohol ink that's like a burgundy color it's a dark color and that's it actually almost looks black in the bottle but it's not and I'm gonna just put a little uh, droplet in the middle of each of my roses because usually roses are darker in the center so the two magenta ones, I gotta do those. Isn't that pretty? Just let it bleed, let it do its thing. You can always go back and put more if you feel that it needs to be darker in the center. This is my green and it's time to scribble on some shapes that resemble leaves. Try not, if your ink is wet, Try not to touch the red roses if you can. It really, it uh, those two colors will just kind of make a, almost a, a, a dark, dark brown color because they're complement colors. So try not to touch the roses, but if you let your roses dry, then you can. I didn't, so I'm trying to stay away from that. So I'm gonna take some yellow and I'm going to hit it in a lot of the white areas and let it um, bleed right into the, um, let it bleed into the green. And that's always very, very pretty. And of course, I'll put some inside the green. I'm always a little surprised when these are done because as hard as I try to have control over it, you don't really have a lot of control. And that's, I guess that's kind of freeing in a way. So just continue to put the yellow. If the yellow hits some of the red, it's gonna turn it orange because that's what red and yellow do. So um, if you don't wanna see orange in your roses, just keep the yellow away. Let it bleed, let it do its thing. Because sometimes as it, it starts to fade you start seeing things that need to be changed so my centers need to be definitely high um, deepened so I'm gonna go ahead and hit those again it's exactly what I want let that bleed isn't it fun to watch it
hitting it with a little bit more green again, just to kind of, again, just, I don't want that much white showing. Just a little bit more. Sometimes it's a little dot can go a long way. So it's, I think it's pretty much ready for the paint pens. So now we have two cards that we're gonna work on next and I can go in the house and here's our finished piece. Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, I've already started doodling. I'm, I've just picked a few spots where I'm going to go and put uh, white. This is by Artistro, by the way. Artistro Art Supplies um, are by far one of the best I've ever tried. These paint pens, no, I have tried so many different companies of paint pens and I just absolutely love their uh, quality. They, um, the colors are very rich and they come in different varieties um, like uh, some have glitter, some are metallic, and then you have your, um, your larger paint pens and your fine and fine tip. And both of these work great for different projects. But um, for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the fine. I do use the large ones when I wanna do some dots or whatever, but I just wanted to get started right away and um, show you that um, these uh, paint pens are just so fun to use. You have to shake them really, really good. And then of course you press down till the paint comes out. And when you see the paint come out, um, you're ready to go. Now I have just, I'm doodling. This is what's called doodling. I'm not trying to, you know, create anything specific. So I just pick a few places that I want to put this particular little design going around and around. And as you can see, this is kind of a, you know, it's a, it's basically a no brainer what I'm doing right here. I'm just kind of picking and choosing what I wanna do. So I'll stop there. And, um, oh, and I wanted to tell you mainly, I mainly use silver and gold, silver and gold or black and white, black and white. So on this one, I'm gonna try to use a little bit of everything. So this is my gold, and I'm gonna make sure the paint's coming out. Shake it up really good. Yep. And on this one, I'm just gonna kind of dot, and the metallics always get really uh, shiny and metallic-y, is that a word? Um, after they're dry. So while it's wet, it kind of looks just like a, you know, like a tan color, but after it dries, it's, very, very beautiful. Their acrylic paint is the same way. When you put it on, it doesn't look as metallic as when it dries. It's just real shiny and has a wonderful um, glow to it when you tilt it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just imitate um, the same thing on each one of these purple flowers. And as you can see, this is the part that is just so relaxing. You really can't make a mistake, but what you're doing is just trying to enhance what you have here on, on your paper. Some of the ink is coming through on the white, which I love, like now it's turning pink. And I actually really like that. So that's why I don't, I don't try to mess with that. So I'm going to take white again. And this time I think I'm just going to go ahead and take this one right here and just do a little spiral. And I'll take this one and do that the same thing. And these are called my little cinnamon rolls. And I'll go ahead and do this right here. The bigger one. And like I said, it doesn't take a whole lot of talent to figure this out. On this, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a little floral petally shape going around. No, nope, I don't want to do that one. I want to do this one. You really can't make a mistake on this. Just have fun and play. A lot of times I do the ink outside, of course, and then I bring it in at, and I do the doodling at night. And it's just very, very relaxing to, um, 
I can't, I'm, I'm just one of these people that just can't sit and watch TV and sit still. I always have to be doing something with my hands. So I usually bring in the doodling part to do at night. Okay, so I'm gonna take some black. And this is where I switch over. I'm gonna do some tiny little roses. And the way I do roses is I just kind of go around and around with just sort of the shape of little petals. Um, practice this on paper if you're not confident enough to just go right to your piece. But as you can see, I'm just sort of drawing um, I start with like a center, like that looks like a, a circle, and then I just go around and around with these little petal shapes. And we'll be doing this again when we do the big roses. So, just have fun, that's the important part. If you wanna just go ahead and um, do the same kind of flowers throughout, oh, by all means do. This is just, I'm just trying to show you all the different techniques I like to use when I am doing this kind of art. Doodling is uh, very relaxing. A lot of people do it when they're, you know, on the phone or whatever, and I just absolutely love doodling. It allows you to kind of escape and forget about the cares of the world, and that's something we just don't need to concentrate on all the time. So I'll just keep going and going. Be careful not to um, put your hand on your work as you're going along. As you can see, I'm turning the piece around because the ink does stay wet for a bit and you don't want to smear it and um, that would just be sad. So we, we definitely want to be mindful of that. Okay, so as you can see, I've got these little roses kind of popping up all over the place. And uh, I'll do a few more. I'm not putting a whole lot of thought into it. Some of the colors I kind of like to leave in the background, um, kind of like I won't even touch the yellow. I love the yellow just kind of being hidden in the background. So let's go ahead and um, let's just, I think I'll go ahead and take, um, I think I'm gonna do silver. Do make sure you shake it really, really good. Um, and on the silver ones, I think I'm gonna, I, on these, um, like I've got this really odd shape one here. So I'm just gonna put little circles inside. Like I said, this, is, this isn't this is supposed to be, this is kind of abstract, okay? So it's not supposed to be exactly, you know, depict something. So as you can see, I just put the silver in there and it will get a lot more shimmery as it dries, just like the gold. So I see this one here that kind of reminds me of that piece, so I'll just put the circles in there. And let's see, let's go ahead and put them in here, why not? And I'll just take them and put them over here. This looks like a pretty flower just hanging around. Okay, so now, I think what I'm gonna do is, I see something that has been kind of bothering me, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that, but I've got this big purple blob right in here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make that one of those flowers. See, you can always go back and add, take away, and then go back with the gold. Give it the little dots. Every so often you have to reshake the pens just make sure that it, you know it's not separating. And um, yeah, I think that's a good place to stop. And now I'm gonna go ahead with the leaves. The leaves I always do last, because I wanna make sure that I've established where my flowers go. And with leaves, I just kind of find a shade, even if the, even if the ink didn't fall that way, and I'll just kind of 
just give it the shape of something like this. And like I said, this is not, maybe this isn't really a leaf. It doesn't really look like a leaf to you, but to me, it's just kind of, um, I do different styles of leaves too. Sometimes I actually do veining and stuff, but this is the easiest, and I'm trying to show you the easiest way to get started with ink and with paint pens. Um, because just like anything else, whether you're working with oils, acrylic, or watercolors, or alcohol ink, the more you do it, the better you get. So just keep finding places to add leaves. I want to leave some of the green. I don't want to do all of the green. Um, this one looks kind of interesting. And as you can see, this was the one that I taped. So I have this white border, which I am going to um, put silver or gold around that. So. And I'm just kind of doing some of these that are tucked in the back. Again, spinning my piece around so that I don't get put my hand, never would ever want to put your hand on your piece while you're working. Just remember that. You'll find out real quick what happens. So as you can see, I like to leave some of the green showing. And because I'm putting white on top of a rich color, this, this white may come through as like a light, light green. It may, it may not. So, all right, let's keep turning it around. And this one here, and this one here. All right, and this one. So I've really established what my bouquet wants to look like. And um, now I've got this pot. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some black. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the big thick black here. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish my pot because I really do want to make that look like a pot. So I've kind of dabbed in some black there and black here. Even though I used a brown where all the dark areas, it does look kind of black. And I'm gonna go ahead and, gotta be careful because there's a lot of wet areas, and just sort of round this out. There. So now the pot looks up more like a pot. And even though this is kind of crooked, I'm, I like that, I'm just not gonna mess with that. So actually I like this so much, I'm not gonna put anything on this because as you can see, the gold really did a beautiful, it almost, it's like it's outlining gold and then it's just got shimmer inside the center. So we're just gonna leave that just the way it is. And then um, I think I need to let this dry just a little bit. So what I'm gonna show you what I do do when I wanna get rid of the border is I take a, I'm gonna take this piece of paper so I don't get anything on my cloth. I'm gonna take the gold and just as carefully as I can, Go along the edge. You can use a ruler if you want, but again, I don't like things to be super perfect. That takes away from it being kind of whimsical and abstract. And so this one, come across here. I somewhat have a steady hand, so I'm able to do something like this without a ruler. Of course, as I get to this one part right here, I might be speaking too soon. this part right here. I'm just sort of following where the paint stops. There, so now I've got my border. Isn't that lovely? And this paint does dry pretty quick, so I'm just, I'm gonna give it a couple minutes and then I'm gonna come back and work on the pot. Okay, so um, I, I just took it out for about 10 minutes and everything is really dry because it's a sunny day today. If it was, if it wasn't sunny, I probably just would have taken a, a blow dryer to it. So anyway, I have this beautiful brown pot. In some ways, I just want to leave it, but 
I do wanna show you that you can do some fun things with that. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take my uh, gold. I think I'm gonna use gold and silver, why not? And I'm taking the big one because this is called medium point, but I it's a lot bigger point than the fine tip. In fact, let me just show you really quick so you can see the difference between the fine tip and the, the bigger one. Okay, so let me put the lid back on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go straight down and dot. This is probably the easiest thing to do with um, these paint pens because it makes a perfect circle when you go straight down and you come straight up. If, if you had it at an angle, you would probably get these um, little slanted designs. So I'm gonna stop here and now I'm gonna take the silver and do the same thing. I'm gonna just give it silver and gold. Shake it up really good. And then always make sure you press down to make sure it's actually coming out. And I'm just gonna go ahead in some of the other areas that the gold is not and do the same thing. And this just kind of gives it more of a, a whimsical look. I pick um, this size out because it makes the perfect card to give to somebody, the five by seven. Also, you can buy frames that are five by seven. So if whoever you gave it to decided that they wanted to frame it, um, it fits perfectly in a five by seven frame. So as you can see, I got done with the pot this way. And so the last thing I wanna do is, I, want, I definitely wanna sign my name. Now, if it's a dark spot here, then I always sign my name with white. But if it's light colored, like this one I left white, I would sign it with a black paint pen. So let me make sure the ink's coming out, it is, and. And it just makes it more look more like an original. Okay, so this one's done and it's ready to be, you know, I put a, a little glue on the, each corner and then I put it on my blank card and then I'm done. So I'm gonna let this dry because it's got some wet dots on it and uh, we'll move on to the roses. Okay, so let's get started with our roses. As I showed you before, these are two other rose cards that I did, one with big ones, and um, I did the same idea, but I just put a lot of little ones on there. And I, I love working with the deep, rich colors, but please feel free to use light pink if you want to. Um, I used uh, the magenta, of course, and the uh, chili pepper red and the sangria. So let's go ahead and start with our petals. And I'm gonna go ahead and just like I showed you in the first one, um, I just, this is my middle and I put that down with the ink so that I knew what to, um, to do from there. Now I have the large pen and I didn't want that. I really wanted the skinny one. So I'm gonna switch over and hopefully that won't make a huge difference. Let's just see. If it does, I'll go back. No, it doesn't. So I'll just go ahead and keep on I have done this before where they look more like poppies and I do love, love when um, I do the poppies. So um, I love red poppies. I love the California poppy too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep going and just till I actually use up all of the red. And this shouldn't take too long because we don't have that many roses to do. Just five roses, so. You could make these look like ranunculus by doing smaller petals. So I don't think that one big one is bothering me too much. So I'm just gonna let things slide on that one. So here's my circle again. And I'm sort of following this richer, darker color, but you really don't have to. Sometimes the, um, the ink makes a shape that works perfectly for you. And other times it doesn't. So you just sort of have to just, remember this is just a contemporary doodle art slash alcohol ink piece. So, and so now I'm just kind of going around. Some, some roses have like a lot of petals on them. 
like your peonies and um, and this one is more just a very full rose with lots and lots and lots of petals okay so I'm gonna call that one done remember always turn your piece and let's go ahead and Sometimes I like to get experimental with my shapes. Every piece is an original, and that's what makes it special. Your ink sort of has a mind of its own, so whatever it does will dictate what you end up doodling afterwards. so I might as well just do it. Ever so often, especially if you're working with the same color for a while, you have to stop, give it a shake, come over here and, you know, make sure that it's, the paint's coming out. This one has a little bit of pink because of the, um, the alcohol that I was uh, dropping on it. So that's kind of sweet. Okay, we'll turn this one around. I love the little speckles of white too. It just gives it um, another, a whole nother dimension of color. And since this one's going off to the side, I can kind of get a little experimental with it. All right, so now my, my roses are done being outlined. All the petals are done. So what I like to do is I'm gonna take some gold and I'm gonna fill this in, not worrying about it being super, And this will just be the middles of my rose for now. I am gonna do more on top of that. So just, we'll let that dry while we work on our leaves. Now this one here had leaves and this one didn't. So if you choose to just do roses, do roses, but this one you know, has all these other elements around it too. So um, again, I'm gonna take the white. You could always do silver if you want to because silver shows up really, really well but I'm gonna stick with my go-to color for leaves. And now this one, I'm gonna do a little bit different and I'm gonna actually draw the shape of the leaf. Now this is for the person that feels confident drawing leaves, you know, go for it. If you don't feel confident, then do the other one that I did where it was just, you know, lines going like this until it met. So, oops, I forgot to put the little points. So I'll just go ahead and wing that, and then the veining. And just pick and choose where you want your leaf to go. So as you can see, I'm really building the whole picture. Now I'm gonna to have to turn it because I don't wanna put my hand. This is a big leaf I'm gonna do right here. And it's actually going off of the page, which is fine. And here's another pretty large leaf. Let's just, um, I'm, like I said, I like to leave some of the green in the background just the way it is. 
so I'm not worried about you know getting every single green spot and turning it into a leaf those are um, hidden in the back okay so as I turn this around I just want to see what it's looking like looks like it could use something right over in this part right here so I'll just do this one and this one all right let's take a look yeah I actually really like the way it's looking so I think I'm gonna just stop so now that I'm at this point I really feel like yep the gold is probably dry and so I'm gonna take the white and I'm going to go ahead and just dot, go straight up and straight down, and even come out of the circle on each one of these. And this really pops because it's against really dark colors, which I like. I'm going to turn this around because I want to put my hand on that. Always try to keep your wrist away from the painting. almost done so as you can see I've done sometimes I've done up to six seven cards when I'm watching TV at night um, just enjoying uh, what you know listening watching a show whatever and doodling at the same time so it goes pretty fast this one's done it's ready to be signed so I'm just gonna go ahead and take the white and sign it down here You can't see it really great, but it's there and the person knows that I signed it. So I think that piece is done and it's ready to be put on a card. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please share it with your family and friends and you can do this. This is easy. This is just blotting down ink and doodling on top and please give it a try. Don't don't think you can't do something this easy. Um, I love teaching beginners because I feel if you know how to paint, you don't need to take any classes. You just keep going and you will get to that point. But the more you do it, the better you get, just like anything else. So um, please check back to see my other lessons. I'll be posting a lot uh, more. And uh, thank you for watching and God bless you. Bye-bye.